They just love dropping ISC early because they know I like working on Thanksgiving. Either way, I'm going to get you guys the news you need. I hope you get to watch this while you're snacking on some Thanksgiving leftovers. If you're American. If not, go out and buy a turkey. Speaking of which, guys, happy Turkey Day from Turkey. And thank you for coming to my tomato talk. So this episode opened up with a love letter to fans for buying so many Mercury Star Runners. I guess they took these two weeks to focus on the new ships in these episodes, and we had some explanations as to why the ship is so loved and what it brings to the table for fans. If you want even more praise for the ship, and to hear why people like it, check out my cinematic review down in the video description or linked right up here. It's a good watch. But past that, we got a sprint report, which I honestly did not expect this week, so that's nice. Here are a few updates on some small things, with one or two that may or may not make it into 312. We'll probably know tomorrow. Now first we got to check out Gas Cloud Tech that has been mentioned and shown off in progress for the last year, but also in the R&D phase for the last few years. It's finally coming to a close for release in 312, or should I say it's finally coming to its first iteration. Even though these clouds are going to make huge changes to the places that we visit in the game, expect this to be the first iteration and to see little incremental changes made to these clouds throughout the next several years. I just really hope that despite the immense size difference between the gas clouds we'll be seeing, we also get some larger structures perhaps reminiscent of the coil from the Odin system. A gas cloud system that requires me to quantum travel through for a full minute to see the other side. It's going to be quite amazing to see how the play space changes with these new environments in the next couple of weeks though. And how CIG uses these locations for things like resource dumps, pirate bases, and conflict areas full of interference. This will be a good topic to watch closely in the next couple of years. Honorable mention here by the way are these guide lights placed around the stations. Talk about added atmosphere. Next, we made a stop off at the new refinery decks coming to Alpha 3.12 as well. These decks have received some updated lighting to increase the drama and depth in the areas. These areas are looking better and better every time we see them. And while the refinery decks will have a small amount of gameplay added alongside them, these atmospheric additions are an important part of what sets Star Citizen apart. Being a first person experience decreases the barrier between you and the things you're interacting with, and having environments that are at the top tier of gaming completely expands the feel of the game for you in terms of immersion. Why do you think Cyberpunk 2077 went first person despite the other games in that company's catalog? After that we had another location based show off, one that I'm not so sure will be in game in December but there is a chance. The space station docking locations are being updated with finishing touches art-wise to make the interiors of the location more detailed and pleasing to the eye. But that's not all there is to these locations. The UI team, according to last month's monthly report, is still working on the docking UI. They may have this finished by December, but we will have to wait for another update early next month to know for sure whether this will see completion. Because, well, ISC and monthly reports, as I like to say, are the best ways to know what's going on with this game. I actually wouldn't put it past CIG to release the docking module to the space stations before docking gameplay is actually available. It would open up the locations for people to use and experience without holding it back just because the UI or the animations hasn't been completed yet. Then they can bring that in a subsequent patch in the next couple of months. Then there was fire. Something we haven't heard about in a while, and it's pretty interesting. So as a thermodynamic engineer in the HVAC industry before doing this YouTube stuff, I have a little bit of experience with this. There are three kinds of heat transfer. Conduction, radiation, and convection. Conduction is heat transfer through solid materials, like when you burn the sh out of your hand from touching your wallet after this week. Radiation 
is heat through electromagnetic waves, such as from the sun or from your wallet after the purchase of that Kraken and Corsair. And convection is heat transfer through a fluid, such as liquid or gas. This is how your air conditioner and certain settings on your oven work. I just gotta say, the fact that CIG is paying this much attention to the minute details of fire propagation is peak Star Citizen. And it's also one of the most detailed fire tools I've ever seen in gaming. This is why these things take so long. They're building the tools for the gaming system to use because others don't necessarily have the scope they're looking for. Is it necessary? Well, I'm not sure. Maybe there's some very specific need for this in Squadron 42. I could see this being a big deal when it comes to gravity affecting fire spread, wind blowing a fire through a forest or savanna, or even a ship's thruster firing out 500 megajoules of energy and you just standing right by it not feeling a thing. That's a big deal and that could definitely be a product of this situation. Regardless, it's certainly cool. Essentially, heat will be able to transfer from sources such as flames over a distance and spread to objects based on their materials. So if you seal a compartment, even though the fire still rages and things are burning, hot gases such as smoke can't escape and set the rest of the ship on fire. This is incredibly interesting. I am interested. Peak interest. I think I might do an entire video on this as we see it progress a little bit further, because this is a really cool topic. Next up, we got some visual updates on a ship we've been watching earnestly for the last several months. Another ship from Crusader Industries, my favorite manufacturer, is on its way into the game in a big way. It's a really big ship, and it'll be able to carry a multitude of things. The engineering section of the ship, the top deck, is now through the gray box phase and just weeks away from being complete. More on this ship to follow very soon. So that's about it for this episode. Hold on, hold on, wait for it. But there is one more thing. Yes, Steve Jobs impersonator. There is one more thing. Some of you may have heard Star Citizen plans to have combined arms, including a giant tank. Well, it looks like that tank is about to see the light of day. Announced in the last few years, this tank has just started its journey from concept to reality. And it looks to maybe be planned for sometime next year. This makes sense as the first ship that can actually carry it is also coming out next year, and we just saw it a couple minutes ago. Hmm. So now we're done for real, but not quite. If you want to win a Mercury Star Runner, I am giving one away for free over on Twitch, ending within the next week. I have a huge giveaway going on over there. You can hop over there, make some points, spend them, and get a chance to win this ship. That is alongside Nomad ship giveaways I'm also doing over there. So if you want to win some ships, maybe consider hopping over there to my channel where we stream Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays and play as a group in my gaming community, which you can also find in the video description. Go ahead and join that Discord. We also have giveaways over there. We have a ton of chat, and we're also looking at other games such as Cyberpunk 2077. If you'd like to help support these giveaways or me and my family, Feel free to join as a channel member here on YouTube or as a member over on Patreon. You'll also get a few perks such as exclusive cinematics and early videos when you sign up. It could be worth it. Thanks again everybody for watching and checking this out, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Special thanks to my top supporters TK, The Alpaca, The Huntress, Ben N, and Dasek.